Welcome to another auto guide comparison brought to you by WeatherTech. This is a breakout face-off from our earlier three-row mega comparison, which you can find the link to down below. But for now, it's sibling rivalry time. In the red corner is the Mazda CX-9. The critical darling of the three-row pack, this is a sharp driving and sharp looking SUV. Meanwhile, in the uh, other red corner, we have the all new Mazda CX-90. The CX-90 continues the Japanese brand's march up market with a new platform, new turbo engine, and mild hybrid powertrain. So the question is with these two, is there enough clear air between them to justify both of their existence? Let's find out. Before we move on, let's take a second to talk about our sponsor. Custom made for an exact fit, WeatherTech offers complete protection for your vehicle's interior. There's the original WeatherTech floor liner and the new WeatherTech floor liner HP that's made from a more flexible material. Both work with your vehicle's floor mat clips and protect up the side of your footwell. Plus the floor liner HP comes with these spikes for even better grip. I have one set in my car and another in my wife's car and we both love them. And let's not forget the cargo liner, which is particularly important for utility vehicles like these. All WeatherTech products come with a lifetime guarantee. So do yourself a favor and click the link in the description below and find the perfect fit for your car today. The CX-9 shape has been pretty consistent for a while now. It's the same Mazda styling cues we've known for years and there's nothing wrong with that. The CX-9 is handsome with a wide hood, squinty headlights, and that standout shield grille. Move around to the back and there's a classy strip of chrome pairing the taillights together, which are also very traditionally Mazda. We don't love those plain looking 20 inch alloys, but on the flip side, we will always say yes to Soul Red. The CX-90 doesn't even offer Mazda's signature hue. Say hello to Artisan Red, which is appropriately enough, a very wine-like color for this fancy pants new model. The CX-90 subtly updates Mazda's house style for a new decade. The headlights are a little squarer, the taillights a little longer. The nose is nice and low for better looks and visibility, and the flanks are super clean. In Mazda's hunt for the luxury brands, the CX-90 rides on positively enormous 21-inch wheels with a cool two-tone design. The tires are also a wide 275 section. The Mazda CX-9 pretty much led the way for mainstream models with premium cabins. There's a distinct air of quality in there, even as one of the oldest models in the segment. General material quality is pretty great, although the fake wood does feel a little out of place. The dashboard's design is simple and sleek, and it flows down into a super wide center console. All of the CX-9's main controls are grouped together nicely, which makes them easy to access. Down on the center console, you have Mazda's rotary control because yes, this is still a touch-free infotainment system. Mazda has said repeatedly that that is a safety reason, and while we understand the argument, it still makes the infotainment system frustrating to use for passengers. The same basic system exists in the CX-90, only on a bigger screen. Honestly, that's probably the CX-90's single biggest hurdle if it's going to take on the traditional luxury brands, because it feels, well, just not very premium. That's honestly the only aspect of the CX-90 that really doesn't feel premium though, and this is even a pre-production model. Mazda has went for a unique fabric approach to the dashboard, and combining that with the light wood and the reflective chrome on the door panels, along with this clean, simple design, makes for a really airy cabin. Folks hopping out of a German car will actually feel right at home behind this thicker steering wheel. Although if I'm being honest with you, I actually prefer the feel of the thinner wheel in the other car. The Mazda CX-9 comes very well equipped with tri-zone climate control, heated second row seats, heated and ventilated front seats, a head-up display, 360 degree cameras, wireless phone charging, and navigation. The CX-90 comes with basically all of that and more to help justify its higher price. You've got second row ventilated seats, for example. You also have a fully digital instrument cluster, which shows off an advanced safety suite, including a very cool adaptive cruise control feature that shows you where the car plays in the road and where other cars are around you. The Mazda CX-90 also has a larger head-up display and a higher resolution backup camera. Both of these Mazdas offer very supportive, very comfortable front row seats. In the older Mazda, like here, you do get a more heavily bolstered front seat, so those who are looking for a more sporty feel will probably prefer those. In the second row, it's pretty much a wash. You don't have a whole lot of headroom for either of them, but at least with the newer car, you get that panoramic glass roof, so it feels a lot more airy. Also, in the newer model, you get doors that open a lot wider, making it easier to get in the second row. 
It's in the third row where the older model starts to fall behind, as one of the tightest waybacks in the class. It's not easy to get back there, and when you do, there's less legroom and headroom for adults. It's really more of a kid-friendly kind of place. Also, there's a lot more creature comforts in the back of the CX-90, which helps it feel more comfortable if you're going to be spending a fair amount of time back there. Both vehicles use turbocharged engines, though very different in design. The CX-9s is Mazda's ubiquitous 2.5-liter four-cylinder turbo, pushing out 250 horsepower and a big 310 pound-feet of torque, at least on premium fuel. It's not new, but it ain't broke either. The CX-9 moves well in everyday use, with a strong mid-range and plenty of passing power. The six-speed automatic is just okay. It's not too bad in terms of shift smoothness or speed, but the lack of gears means the CX-9 has to run at higher RPMs on the highway. When it comes to ride quality, the CX-9 is one of the firmer rides on the market. It makes this Mazda feel responsive, especially with the well-weighted, accurate steering. The older Mazda doesn't have the refinement of its newer sibling, but its relative light weight makes it feel eager on back roads, and smaller. The CX-90 uses a whole new 3.3 liter inline six. This one is the higher powered option, which puts down a very healthy 340 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. More than the extra power, it's the silky smooth delivery that helps the CX-90 feel distinctly more premium. The new Mazda simply sails down the road. Helping it out is a new eight-speed automatic that's an in-house design. The transmission houses a mild hybrid system too, so low speed pickup is strong and the start stop is seamless. It's also super efficient with a quoted 28 miles per gallon highway figure, but in use, the CX-90 almost saw 30. Like its elder sibling, the CX-90 does ride with a little more firmness than your average three row. Over bumps and potholes, the CX-90 is never harsh, just composed. It also does that fine Mazda trick of feeling smaller and lighter than it really is. Pricing is naturally a pretty big gap between these two. As tested, the Mazda CX-9 rings in at just $50,330 in the US. The CX-90 is significantly higher, at $61,920 as equipped. In Canada, that gap is way smaller. The CX-9 is $56,495 in Canadian loonies, meanwhile the CX-90 is $65,745. Whenever Mazda releases a new double-digit SUV, we have to ask the question, does the single digit still make sense? So far it's been 50-50. The CX-3 is dead, but there is clear air between the CX-5 and the CX-50. Here, it's another win. The CX-9 is more of a traditional three-row SUV. Or, well, maybe not three-row. Think of it more as a large two-row with additional jump seats. A four plus two, if you will. Meanwhile, the CX-90 feels every inch the competitor for the Germans, a bona fide luxury offering. It's smooth, it's swanky, and it's just different enough to really stand out for someone who wants that. Turns out there is room in the family after all.